Have you ever wondered who is the best sniper in the history of the United States military? Well, the hero is none other than Chris Kyle. To date, he is the deadliest sniper in the United States military history from four tours in the Iraq War. The following movie recap is the 2014 American biographical war movie called American Sniper. It tells the story of Chris Kyle, which is loosely based on a memo he wrote in 2012 to tell about his story and experiences in the Iraq War. So, how about we dig in now and get to know more about this hero? The opening scene shows the U.S. Navy SEAL sniper Chris Kyle perched on a rooftop. He is scoping out the part for a military convoy through a sniper rifle. He spots a man talking on a cell phone. However, he does not have any confirmation if the man is reporting about the troop movements, and so he can't shoot him. After the man disappears from the rooftop, a woman and young children appear in the doorway. The woman removes a grenade from her cloak and hands it to the boy. We are then taken some years back to when Chris Kyle was just a child. He is hunting with his father and successfully kills a deer. His father is proud of his son's skills and congratulates him on his excellent shot. Over the next several scenes, we get to see more of Chris Kyle's childhood. He has a younger brother called Jeff. In one instance, Jeff is being beaten up by a much larger kid. Chris runs up and beats up the bully, thereby saving his brother. That night during dinner, Kyle's father tells them there are three types of people in the world. There are sheep, wolves, and sheepdogs. The sheep are people who think there is no evil in the world. The wolves are people who are predators and commit evil. The sheepdogs are people who are blessed with the aggression and bravery to protect the world from evil. Years later, when Chris returns home, he finds his girlfriend in bed with another man. He kicks the man out after some kicks. He then turns to his girlfriend and tells her to leave. As Chris and his brother are watching the news, they see the news of the 1998 terrorist attacks on the U.S. embassies in Tanzania and Kenya. Chris is angry that U.S. citizens are being killed by terrorists. He decides to join the military so that he can become a sheepdog to protect his country. When Chris goes to the U.S. Navy office for recruitment, the recruiter suggests that Kyle should join the Navy SEAL program. He goes through a rigorous training process, since SEALs are primarily used for special operations. This includes being blasted with a powerful hose while exercising. They also have to lie down on the beach and let the cold surf wash over them. Despite the challenging training, and Chris Kyle being mocked by trainers for being too old, he manages to go through it. The trainers have then taken through sniper training. He brings his hunting background into the training and excels better than the other trainers. One notable thing is that he keeps both of his eyes open when shooting. At one time, his trainer tells him to keep his non-scoping eye closed to better focus on the target. Kyle refuses and says he needs to keep both eyes open to see what else is out there. The trainer says there's nothing else there and reprimands Chris with 50 push-ups. However, Kyle shoots a hidden snake in the grass, thereby proving he was right about keeping both his eyes open. Chris Kyle meets a woman named Taya at the bar. She insists that she would never marry a Navy SEAL since her sister went through a bad experience when she dated a SEAL. After numerous calls, the lady accepts to go out with Chris and they start dating. Their relationship progresses and they are soon married. During the wedding, Kyle and his fellow SEALs receive intel that they will be deployed to Iraq. Now, let's go back to where we started. Do you remember in the opening scene when the woman gave the little boy a grenade? The boy turns out to be a convoy, a grenade in hand. Kyle does not want to shoot him, but he does not have a choice. He pulls the trigger and the boy falls. The woman runs and picks up the grenade. As she is about to fling the grenade at the convoy, Kyle pulls the trigger again and the woman falls. The grenade explodes at a safe distance and no troop is injured. When Kyle goes back to the base camp, his fellow SEAL congratulates him. However, he admits he is not happy about the kill and confesses that he never knew this is what it would take him to protect his country. However, he does not regret killing the boy and woman, since his focus is to protect the country. As the marine units go door to door searching for an Al-Qaeda leader named Zarqawi, Kyle provides overwatch for them. He successfully protects the troops and shoots any potential attackers carrying guns and bombs. 
He is the most dedicated soldier and even urinates in his post to avoid abandoning his watch. During one particular watch, Kyle makes six kills. This is more than all the other snipers in that shift combined. This leads the other troops to start referring to him as the legend. Chris Kyle becomes so good that Al-Qaeda starts fearing him. They even go to the point of placing a bounty on his head. Kyle also gets to hear about an Al-Qaeda sniper, namely Mustafa, who won a gold medal for shooting in the Olympics. Mustafa is highly experienced and is known for making nearly impossible shots. Kyle keeps complaining about being assigned to overwatch the Marines. He feels that he is more trained and should be with them when going door to door since he cannot protect them as a sniper when they are inside the building. In fact, there are instances where a marine gets shot while inside the building and Kyle has no way of preventing that while on overwatch. Kyle abandons his overwatch post and joins the marines as they go door to door. They find a family that has refused to vacate. They show the man a picture of Zarkari and ask if he knows him. The man says that he knows Butcher, who is the second in command after Zarkarwi. He says that he can provide Kyle with information on the Butcher, but he wants to be paid $100,000 first. It is established that the intel being provided by the man is real. Kyle drives back to the man's home to bring him the money in exchange for information about Butcher. On the way, Kyle calls his pregnant wife, who informs him that their baby is a boy. While Kyle is still enjoying the news, his vehicle is suddenly attacked. Ty is left on the other side screaming to the horror of intense gunfire and unsure if her husband is okay. It turns out the convoy is being attacked by the skilled sniper, Mustafa. Kyle tries to take him out, but his efforts are futile. It turns out that the butcher got informed that the man had given information to the US military. He kills the man's young son with a handheld power drill. He then shoots the man and warns the rest not to dare cooperate with the US military. Butcher and the sniper are able to escape unharmed. A few days later, the troops return home, and Taya tearfully reunites with Kyle. As we all know, war is never good. It changes you, whether you want it or not. Chris Kyle finds it hard to adjust to life back at home. He spends time deep in his thoughts and watching videos of US soldiers being killed by a sniper. Taya begs with Kyle to open up but he refuses since he doesn't want her to know about the atrocities they're facing in Iraq. While at the obstetrician's office for a checkup, the doctor asks Chris Kyle how he's doing, to which he responds that he's fine. However, upon taking his blood pressure, she finds it to be 170 over 100, which is very high. Despite the doctor's and his wife's concerns, Kyle says it is not a big deal and he will take care of it. On their way back home, Taya goes into labor. They rush back to the hospital and she gives birth to their son. Chris Kyle is redeployed for a second and third tour. The bounty put on his head by Al-Qaeda continues to increase. He continues protecting his fellow soldiers while also searching for Butcher, the sniper who has been terrorizing American troops. Kyle now leads a team of Navy SEALs. One of his men, Mark, regrets the war. However, Kyle reminds him that they are patriots serving their country and protecting their families. During a mission, the team gets intelligence that the butcher might be hiding in a certain building. The team breaks into a home across the street to observe. They find a family living there and stays with them. The man invites the seals for dinner, where they feast while having a great time. When the man is talking to his son, Chris Kyle notes that his elbows are raw. Since snipers spend a lot of time held up on their elbows, they typically get similar injuries, and this leads Kyle to realize the man might be dangerous. He fakes going to the bathroom and starts searching for the apartments. He finds a hidden compartment with guns and explosives. He returns to the dining table, grabs the man, and brings him to the weapons. The man realizes he is defeated and says he will help the SEALs get into the building they have been scouting. At gunpoint, the Navy SEALs force the man to knock on the apartment's door. When the door opens, a sniper takes out the door opener. The man tries to use the door opener's gun to shoot at the seals, but he is killed too. When they enter the house, they find that Butcher and other terrorists have escaped through back tunnels. They attack the terrorists as they escape and kill many of them. Due to the seals' experience, they are able to easily defeat the terrorists despite being outnumbered. The Butcher almost manages to escape on a vehicle. However, 
the vehicle receives heavy fire from the Navy SEALs, leading to an explosion that kills him. Between the deployments, Chris Kyle struggles to readjust to civilian life. Loud noises remind him of the battlefield and startle him deeply. Soon enough, his wife gives birth to their daughter. When Kyle visits his daughter in the nursery, she begins to cry. Since the nurse is handling another baby, she does not immediately attend to Kyle's daughter. Due to the screams, Kyle becomes increasingly agitated, screaming at the nurse and knocking at the wall. Back at home, his wife bitterly remarks that Kyle is missing his kids' childhoods. She regrets that she is creating memories all by herself. Kyle argues that he's protecting his family and country, and that is why he's continuing with his sniper job. Back in Iraq during a mission, Biggles is shot in the face by Mustafa. This deeply angers Kyle since Biggles was one of his closest friends. He is rushed back to the base for surgery. Kyle visits Biggles in a hospital where he seems to be in good spirits. He also reveals that he is now engaged to his girlfriend. After the third tour, Kyle is still unable to connect with his family. He feels compelled to go back to war. An argument ensues with his wife asking him whether he has a death wish. She argues that Kyle has already done enough and it is time for others to go and serve their country. He tries to smooth things, but she says that if he goes back to war again, she and the children will not be waiting for him when he returns. While Kyle is talking with another SEAL, he is informed that Biggles has died in a recent surgery. This shocks Kyle, who had just visited him in the hospital, and it fuels his anger to kill the Mustafa sniper. During one overwatch, Kyle follows a man with a grenade launcher, before the man can attack the American troops, Kyle shoots him. A young boy runs over and takes the grenade launcher. Kyle is concerned that he has to kill a child once again. Fortunately, the boy puts down the grenade launcher, much to Kyle's relief. Chris Kyle and his team are informed that engineers are building a wall around the city that will help in battle. However, a sniper has been picking up the soldiers from over 1,000 yards away, which implies that Mustafa must be the one responsible. Despite an oncoming sandstorm, the team head to the city on a rooftop. However, their given position seems to be incorrect since Mustafa shoots from another angle and kills yet another soldier. After changing locations, Kyle believes that he has spotted Mustafa through the scope. However, the rest of the team does not believe him since the sniper is more than 2,000 yards away. They argue that, at such a distance, it is impossible to see the other sniper, let alone shoot him. Additionally, the team spots many insurgents walking around the building. This leads them to further discourage Kyle from taking the shot since it will alert the insurgents about the SEAL's position. The leader calls to the base to send a response team, and they warn Kyle not to take the shot before the backup arrives. But guess what? Kyle is not ready to let this chance go away. He takes the shot and awaits as the bullet cuts through the air. It turns out to be an excellent shot, and Mustafa is instantly killed. The insurgents hear the gunshot and start attacking the SEALs. The four SEALs take the terrorist one by one to conserve their ammo, since the backup has not yet arrived. Kyle calls his wife Taya and tells her that he is now ready to come home as the fight continues. The men continue engaging with the insurgents who outnumber them by far. Fortunately, the backup soon arrives and starts supporting them. Additionally, the sandstorm reduces visibility and helps them to escape to their vehicle. As they run to the car, Kyle is shot. Fortunately, he is able to make it into the truck. Chris Kyle returns home. However, he is still having a hard time due to his experiences in the war. For example, Ty finds him intently watching the TV as if it were on, while in fact it was actually off. When they watch the children play, a dog playfully grabs the collar of a boy. Kyle rips off his belt and grabs the dog. Just before he beats or strangles it, Taya cries out in horror, and Kyle comes back to his senses. Kyle visits a doctor who informs him that he is officially credited with 160 kills, making Kyle the deadliest sniper in U.S. history. The doctor asks Kyle if he has any regrets for those deaths, to which he replies that he did not regret the kills. He only regrets not saving more American troops. The doctor tells him there are more troops he can help here back at home. He takes Kyle to a support group of disabled veterans. Kyle easily connects with the men as they share their stories. 
He takes some of the men to a shooting range and teaches them how to shoot sniper rifles. They are overjoyed, and after one of them hits a target, he remarks that it's the first time he felt like a man since he was injured in battle. With time, Chris Kyle regains himself. He becomes social with his children and plays with them. He also connects with his wife, and they start having a great time together. He also goes ahead and trains his young son to hunt. Ty reveals she is very proud of him for having found his way back to his family. Chris Kyle tells his wife that a mom has reached out to him asking for his son's help as he has been struggling after returning from war. After Kyle leaves, we get a glimpse of the uneasy young man that is going to help as Taya watches. The door closes, and it is revealed in the final credits that the troubled young Marine killed Chris Kyle on that day. In the end credit sequence, actual footage from Chris Kyle's funeral procession and burial is shown.